Hey guys, welcome to Code Decode. So in this video, we are going to see another interview question on arrays, and this time we have picked sort colors, uh, which is question number seventy-five on lead code, and it's of medium category. Why we are covering this question? Because this question has been asked in many mid-level or high-level product-based companies, even in uh, fang-level companies, this question has been asked in many a times. So now let's jump into the question and see what the problem statement is all about. So we have given an input array nums with an object uh, that is colored red, white, and blue, and we have to do the in-place sorting so that the same colors are adjacent to each other. So basically, we have given three colors: red, white, and blue, which represent integers zero, one, and two. And we have given this color in jumbled form. And basically, we have to sort these colors. And the only condition is we don't have to use the inbuilt library sort function that is arrays dot sort, and we have to do the in-place sorting. So there are two approaches which we can solve this problem. The first one is the brute force approach, and the second one is the optimal. In many interviews, like uh, interview will ask you to optimize the solve brute force approach. So we are going to cover these two approaches in this video. So please be with me till the very end so that you will get the maximum out of this video. Uh, now let's jump into the brute force approach. So in the brute force approach, we have given an array two zero two one one zero. So what we are going to do is we are going to compare each element with every other element. For example, we are going to compare two with all of this element, and then we are going to compare zero with all of this element. In this way, we are going to check whether the particular element is greater than the other element. So we have initialized the first for loop that is from i is equal to zero till length, and inside that we have initialized another for loop from j is equal to i plus one till length. So in this way, we are going to compare each element with every other element, and in that loop, we are comparing a of i with a of j, and we are checking if a of i is greater than equal to a of j. Then we are swapping those two element. So at the end of the iteration of both this loop, we are going to get desired result that is zero zero one one two two. So this is a very simple approach, and the time complexity of this approach is O of n square, and the space complexity would be O of one, because we are not using any other array. We are doing the in-place sorting. So let's jump into the code and see how we can do this. So I have already written code over here, and I am just going to dry run that code. So initially, our array is in the jumbled form because this uh, elements are not in sorted order. And if I'll debug this to the next debug point, you can see that our array is in the sorted form. But as you can see, the complexity is O of n square, so we have to reduce this complexity, and we are going to see the optimal approach. So I would request you to pause this video and uh, try to solve, try to resolve this complexity from O of n square to O of n. I'm just giving you one hint that is you can use three pointers approach, and using that three pointers approach, you will be able to solve this uh, problem with O of n square to O of n. Okay, now let's jump into the optimal solution. So in our optimal solution, what we have to do is we have to convert the time complexity of O of n square to O of n. So here we have input array, and here we have output array. By seeing both the input and output array, I can clearly see one intuition, and that intuition is all the low element is at the start position, and all the highest element is at the end position. So by seeing this, we can clearly see that we can take two pointers, that is one at the start and one at the end, and we can name as low, and we can name as high. Also, there is one more uh, possibility of intuition here is like we have to traverse this array only once. So we need to traverse this array from zero to length, and I am going to take a third pointer, which will be the traversing pointer, and I am going to name as mid, and I am going to put at start. So what I am going to do is I am going to iterate this mid pointer from zero to length, and I am going to also going to check what's the value of this mid pointer. If the value of this mid pointer is zero, so it should not be at the mid position; it should be at the start position. So I'll swap with low, and If the value of the mid pointer is two, then it should not be at the mid. It should be at the end, towards the end. So I'll swap with high. And if the value is one, so what we'll do? We'll do nothing. Okay. So the first condition, what we are going to do is we are going to initiate one loop. And to iterate mid pointer from zero to end, the condition would be mid should be less than equal to high. In that scenario. We are iterating the mid pointer from zero to high because mid pointer is at the zero position and high pointer is at the last index. Okay, and we are going to check if 
a of mid is equal to equal to zero, and what we will do? We will swap. We will swap with a of low. Okay, right. And after the swapping, we know that the lowest index, that is the zeroth element, is at the start position. So we will increment both low and mid. So low should be low plus plus, and mid should be mid plus plus. Else if, what if our a of mid is not zero? What if our a of mid is equal to equal to two? So if a of mid is equal to equal to two, it should not be at the middle position. It should be at the last position. So what we will do? We will swap. We will swap a of mid with a of high, and we will decrement the high pointer. Here we are not incrementing the mid pointer. Why? Because what if my mid is two? And my high is zero. So in that condition, we will swap. So after swapping, my mid is zero, and my high is two. If I'll increment the mid pointer, so I won't be able to swap this zero with low. So that's why we are not incrementing the mid pointer in this condition. And what if my a of mid is neither zero or neither two? So in that case, it should be one. And in that case, we are not doing any kind of swapping. We are just incrementing the mid pointer, mid plus plus. and that's it that's what we have to do we have to first initialize the while loop then we have to check whether mid is a of mid is equal to equal to 0 if a of mid is equal to equal to 0 we will swap with a of low and we will increment the low pointer and the mid pointer else if our a of mid is not equal to 0 it, it if if it is equal to 2 then we will swap with a of high and we will decrement the high pointer we are not decrementing the middle pointer here And what if our a of mid is not equal to two, or a of mid is not equal to one? So what we'll do? We'll just increment the mid pointer. That's it. Now let's jump into the code. So I have already written the code, and the code is very simple. This is the code. Here, what I have done is I have increment. I have initialized three pointers. That is, low is equal to zero, mid is also equal to zero, and high should be at the length minus one. I have initialized one while loop from mid is less than equal to high. And inside that, first we are checking a of mid is equal to zero. Then we are doing the swap here, and we are incrementing mid and low. Else, if if a of mid is equal to two, then we are doing the swap with high, and we are decrementing high. We are not incrementing mid. And in the else condition, we are on only incrementing mid. We are not doing any kind of swapping. Okay, so let's debug this. So at the start of this loop, the input array is in the jumbled form, and if we will see at the end, our input array is in the sorted form. So that's all about this question. If you want us to create more questions regarding arrays, stack, linked list, binary tree, DP, recursion, please let us know in the comment section. We have collected some of the interview question which has been frequently asked in the interviews for you guys. So please let us know in the comment section if you want us to cover this many interview questions because we have covered some of them but most of them are remaining. So if you want us to cover all of these question, please let us know in the comment section so that we will create a separate video on each of them. Till then, bye bye.